Hi folks, my name's Lance Coles. I have a love of Australia and try to tell our Australian story in rhyme. So with a friendly little nudge from the family, I've been persuaded to share my thoughts and some of those of our great Aussie poets with you. I must admit I owe a great deal of gratitude to my daughter and young grandson Bo who uh, set up this site for me because I ain't got a clue about technology. Anyhow, I hope you enjoy what uh, you hear and invite others to join you and follow the series. My first poem is called My Australian Home. Australia is my homeland. May I ne'er forget her graces. The beauty God has given her, this heart of mine embraces. White sands on endless beaches, caressed by crystal seas, and multicoloured flocks of birds soar on the summer's breeze. Miles of golden crops of grain grown with toil and sweat, flocks of sheep and cattle herds, a land I can't forget. Tall stately trees in bushland grow the eucalypt and carry. To smell the sweet gum scented air will cause the soul to tarry. Yet coupled with her tenderness, there lies a harshness too, with dry red earth and desert plains beneath her skies so blue. The home of wombat, kangaroo, snake and kookaburra, the Australian Aborigine, boomerang and nulla nulla. Those carers of this island land from ancient times their own now share with those who truly wish to call this land their home. I love this wondrous country. To me, each day she sings of all her natural beauty and the hope to all she brings. Now, this Australia that we know today took a lot of hard work. And I'd like to honour a group of uh, people who really did a lot to make this country what it is today. And that is our pioneer women. To a land of many hardships came those women full of grit, filled with strong determination, never knowing when to quit. From backgrounds wide and varied, convict, farmer, upper crust, they made this land a nation facing fly and heat and dust. Many lived lives under canvas or in bush huts made of bark, carried buckets full of water, worked from dawn into the dark. They laboured on relentless, working hard to build a dream. Calloused hands and sunburnt faces soon replaced skin smooth as cream. Nursing baby in the one arm, fighting bushfire with the other, it was no easy way of life to be a pioneer mother. Daily fighting hard long battles, loneliness and loss of child, they continued on undaunted to tame this country wild. Heavy hearts weighed down with sorrow, yet with little time for tears, they toiled beside their menfolk to bring in better years. Emma Withnell, Carolyn Chisholm, Harriet King and countless more carved their names across this country from the east to western shore. We salute these pioneer women, unsung heroes of their day, and we owe a debt of gratitude. Respect can only pay. Well, besides uh, that type of thing in Australia here, we uh, also have another group of people who work very hard. Uh, they have a hard life. They love it. And I don't think they'd swap it for anything. That's the people that live in the outback. Well, they have a good sense of humour. So I'd like to uh, dedicate this poem to them. Uh, and it's called Bruiser and the Vet. When you're living in the outback and need medical attention, you may have to take what's offered with the very best intention. Well, it was on one such occasion that a vet did need persuasion to remove a rotten molar from our blacksmith, Bruiser Jack. 
Now, Jack's manner was quite mellow, but he was an awesome fellow, with his body and his arms built like trunks of boab trees. For some months he had been growling like a hungry dingo howling, so the locals all agreed something desperate must be done. But such a task would not be easy. Jack at times could get quite queasy at the sight of human blood, especially if it was his own. Then the word came on the wire that the vet John Smith Esquire would be coming into town in another week or two. So the town devised a plan to persuade this learned man to assist him in restoring peace once more. The town's one and only barber was an old retired shearer, but he had a dinkum chair that would suit their purpose fine. Local barman Boozer Brown had a stool just out of town, and it had a kick like old man kangaroo. They could get Jack really rotten till his tooth he had forgotten, then lead him to the chair with the promise of more booze. But first a four-man town committee would greet this vet up from the city and would treat him to the township's very best. Like a free meal at the pub, time to sleep and have a scrub, then they put him to that very vital test. Well... When he saw that awesome man and he heard that desperate plan, it was clear he'd need a solid drink or two. So they got the two together, got them both under the weather, and led them off into the barber's shop. For an hour, the vet was straining, but no ground seemed to be gaining, and he cursed himself for falling for their plot. Also filled with expectation, waiting in anticipation, more of Bruce's medication, they forgot. As he yanked the tooth once more, Boozer let out with a roar and his mighty arm came flying through the air. Hit the vet upon the chin, sent him clear into a spin, and he landed up against the barber's door. There beside him on the ground, Boozer's rotten tooth they found, with its roots implanted firmly in the floor. When they brought the vet around, they all looked at Boozer Brown. All that work had really made him feel quite dry. So it was back to Boozer's still, where they all could drink their fill, and the town could bid the fat John Smith goodbye. And that's where I must end it for today, folks. I must say goodbye and see you again soon. Thank you.